everyone in town knows the tortilla bakery. And everyone in Ayutla, a Mexican town near the Pacific coast, also knows the owner. Enaida Lozano supplies the staple food for Ayutla's people. It's a busy place, but all is not well at the bakery. Enaida has to run it alone with her workers. Half a year ago, her husband was abducted right out of the shop. She says they took two months to call and demand a ransom. I wanted proof that my husband was still alive. They wanted half a million pesos or 30,000 euros. But first, I at least have to speak to him, otherwise how can I be sure? Crime is flourishing in Mexico, not least in rural areas. Criminal gangs do not hesitate to kidnap, extort or kill people. They abducted Anaida's husband in front of dozens of witnesses. She says they went with him across the market square, even though many people were there. I saw them myself. They walked right past me. I thought they were bodyguards and they went into the town hall. My husband was supposed to become mayor soon. Outside of town, five corpses were found, and Ida's husband was not among them. Still, she's drawn to the place where the killers left the bodies behind, and she's not alone. Many other families have suffered similar fates. Armed men accompany the group. It's safer that way. They're the Ayotla militia, they, not the police, were the ones who found the bodies, as Commander Romualdo Remisio tells us. He says, I'm sick of having to keep digging up bodies, often of my friends. We have police and authorities that earn money and enjoy privileges, but they don't protect us from the killers. So we decided to defend ourselves, and we set up a vigilante militia. These militias, or policia comunitarias, are springing up all across Mexico. It's because the police can't come to grips with the country's crime problem. The militias appeal for volunteers, and many thousands have responded. These people know all too well how dangerous the gangs are, so they prefer to remain anonymous. <laughs> Like Raimundo Nava, most of them here are farmers who until recently paid the gangs protection money out of fear for their lives. Whoever refuses to pay risks being killed. Raimundo Nava works in an agricultural cooperative, but only part-time, because he's also a militia member. He tells us that last night they broke in again and made off with 30 sacks of hibiscus flowers and cash. I can't take it anymore, he says. We suffer so much from this constant peril. I'm not talking about one or two incidents. Here, crimes are committed every day. It's a business. It's like an industry. And who knows where it will all lead to. After work, the farmers turn into a small army. They trade in their tools for rifles and shotguns. Ayutla is under arms, the militia a thousand men strong. And they say that since they took over from the police, there's been no sign of the criminals. They show their presence by patrolling through town and try to collect information about crimes from the other locals. Raimundo, the farmer, is now a commander. The market traders are just as terrified of the gangs as the farmers are. The militia tries to help, but not everyone trusts them. Some don't like the idea of vigilantism. Others object to having even more Mexicans carrying guns and fighting violence with violence. Suddenly, no one here knows a thing about any gangs. A woman at the market complains to Comandante Nava. She says militiamen detained her husband because he allegedly didn't pay his debts and imprisoned him without evidence, she says. 
Of course there are objections, Raimundo tells us, but the real problem is that the police won't go after the criminals. We do, but as a militia we have to depend on our neighbours. People say Ayotla has quietened down since the vigilantes started patrolling. Many support them. The criminals, most of whom have ties to the country's powerful drug cartels, then move on to places where they don't face any militias, where the police are their only opponents. We hear the police are actually on the take, that they collect bribes and ignore the crimes. The sad fact is that Mexico's justice system solves only 2% of the country's violent crimes. Three days after we leave, these pictures were broadcast on Mexican TV. They show Raimundo Nava and hundreds of other militiamen arresting 12 police officers and their former chief, who had allegedly worked together with criminals. It's another new high point in a war in which it's every man for himself. Mexico's government gives the militias a free reign and even special rights to possess firearms and detain suspects. Politicians are so afraid of the crime syndicates that none are willing to speak to us. Then finally, one city councilman tries to explain, anonymously. He says politicians at the federal level, the senators and representatives, all know very well what's going on here, but for them the problems are very complex. The problems are too big and there aren't enough opportunities. There aren't enough people and there's no intelligence on the gangs either. We have some possibilities, but they're not enough. The great beauty of this country stands in almost perverse contrast to the crimes committed here and to the fear that people harbour. Mexico has more than half a million police officers, but the vigilante leaders say they've achieved more with just a few thousand members. But even they can't permanently roll back organized crime. They can't protect all of Mexico's 115 million people. When we enter this restaurant, we wonder why it and many others are totally deserted at lunchtime. The owner tells us her story, but she's afraid of being recognized. It's hard to believe, she says, but the gangs have the entire town in their grip, and my guests don't come here anymore out of fear. Until now, I've been lucky, but I know that sometime they'll show up and demand protection money if I want to stay in business. She refers us to a friend of hers, an architect. He was building a housing complex when the president of the town administration asked him to contact certain people. These people asked for 10% of the revenue so that construction could continue securely. As if by coincidence, 10% was also the level of his own profit. He has small children and says he doesn't know what to do next. There's not much left to do, he says, and we'd be finished soon. If I pay, I'd have secure work, but I don't think it's acceptable. We cannot do that because in the end we'd only be their silent accomplices and they'd keep doing with us whatever they want. But these self-defense initiatives have two sides. Last month, at vigilante roadblocks like these, two cars with tourists were shot at because they didn't stop. Driving through the country, we had to stop at dozens of such barriers. Many of the farmers defending their villages conceal their faces for fear of the killer gangs. They feel they're doing the right thing because the state is failing to protect them. We are simple people, he says, who just want peace in our villages and homes. And we're no longer going to allow certain people to show up here and disturb that peace, demand protection money and treat us like slaves. She says the police come here, take people out of our midst and abuse them. We don't dare go to the authorities anymore because you can't be sure that afterwards it won't be your turn. Once they know who you are, they just wait until they catch you alone.
This woman says we made a decision to protect ourselves, even if it costs us our lives. We decided for the sake of our families. The murderers' gangs are destroying the fabric of a whole country. Mexico's victims are the witnesses to a creeping process of failing statehood. Enaida Lozan didn't always sit together with her neighbors so often. Today, she says, they all share the same memories, traumas and hopes. All those at this table have lost partners, sons or daughters. Like Nati Castro's 15-year-old daughter, Maria, who one day didn't come home from school. Nati says it's totally devastating because you never find out what they've done to our loved ones, whether they're still alive or dead. These people have no idea what they do to families. They destroy the entire family. The peace and calm we once knew will never get it back. Wherever you go in Mexico, it's always the same. The only differences are the names of the gangs of kidnappers all over the country. We thirst for justice, we hunger for what's right. But in this country, waiting for the government to deliver isn't going to help us. Perhaps the militias would have protected their families, perhaps. But by encouraging vigilante militias, the Mexican state is looking increasingly powerless.